the show is cool, but it feels so rushed. Just my thoughts. I'm yours, Khalil Ward. On this episode, I'll be talking about Gairudin, The Way of the Lone Wolf. It's a Netflix anime. It's eight episodes. They're like 25 minutes each. So we follow this character named Juzo Fujimaki. I believe that's how you say it. Turns out he killed someone and he's been on the run for seven years. Someone broke into his master's house and he ended up killing that person. Anyway, when we meet him, he is fighting a bear. He's protecting these people, fighting a bear, with his bare hands, by the way, and he beats the bear up, and then he disappears. We see this cop who's been trailing him for seven years, trying to find him, trying to arrest him, you know. And Fujimaki just keeps going to these different places, trying to hide out and stay out of the spotlight, but he keeps coming across people, and they're like, I want to fight you. And he's like, I don't want to fight any person. He always says that. I don't want to fight a person. And they're like, but I want to fight you. So let's fight. And he gets into some fights. And when he fights, we get a lot of inner monologue. We, that, instead of having like a narrator, you've seen fighting shows. Instead of having a narrator break down a person's attributes and stuff, it's a lot of inner monologues for these characters. Like analyzing their opponent. Like, oh, this person's very strong, very sharp. Oh, that was very quick. Oh, wow, he moves fast. Stuff like that. But Fujimaki has this, this wolf, this beast inside of him. And he's always trying to keep it down. Does that always work? No. Sometimes it comes out. And not that he transformed, but you can see his focus sharpen. And it's like he wants to kill the person. Like It, it, it starts off like a sparring. Like, oh, okay, cool. But then when the beast is unleashed, he gets to a point where he can... Kill someone. The first four episodes of the show, we're meeting all these different fighters. They're naming all these different martial arts styles that I don't remember. And it's like, cool. In my head, I'm thinking, all right, these guys are going to get together and they're going to have a tournament. You Have you seen Baki? Like, you know, stuff like that. It didn't really turn out that way. So Fujimaki, again, on the run, we're meeting these people. And it turns out this person named the sergeant is putting together some underground tournament. And they've been monitoring Fujimaki. And he beats a particular person. They're like, cool, since you beat him, you're in. And he's like, I don't want to be in. But then they're like, we put something in your system and we can activate it to kill you. So you got to participate, whatever. And they go to this location and it's like, this is the tournament? We don't spend any time with any of these other characters to understand them. You know, like even in Baki, it's like when we meet someone, they're like, this is so-and-so. He's done this, this, and this. This is why he's in prison. His abilities include this, this, and this. This is why he's deadly. And, you know, we, we get some breakdown. Even in Kagan and Shora, when they in the tournament, these two people are fighting. The announcer, the narrator, he's like, meet this guy. He's from this place. He's done this 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 and this his abilities when he does one of them this is what the ability does nobody's ever done this we get information in this show we don't get any of that it's like when he goes to the competition he can bring like an advisor so he brings the guy he just beat and they walk into this crappy looking hotel like it's not even a a nice tournament like even for an underground tournament baki had a decent arena to fight in in the underground tournament they're in some crappy hotel. They're like, yeah, fights can take place anywhere. And the guy goes, that's a sumo wrestler. That's a kickboxer. That's that guy. He does that. None of the people we met early on in, in the show, by the way. It's just some other people. And it's like, cool. That guy lost off, off camera. That guy lost. And then when Fujimaki fights, we get a brief detail of, of the person he's fighting. And then it's like, <laughs> fight's over. No, like, special breakdown of the move is just like nope he broke his arm or something like that it, it, it's over we get the underground tournament really quick and then there's another tournament that he has to go to because other people are trying to start martial arts tournaments and it just feels like everything is moving so fast we see other fighters and they fight but it goes by so quick and it's like 
Why, why are we in a rush? We got through two tournaments in this eight episodes. Tournaments usually take 10, 12 episodes just for one. And we got two tournaments and Fujimaki is just going through and it gets to a point where his master loses a fight. And the master's like, maybe my style of karate or whatever is going away. And Fujimaki's like, no, I'll keep the style alive. And then the master's like, I told it to some other people. Now Fujimaki wants to fight those people to see how good they are to carry this style forward. Like, it has some moments, but they rush through so much. Like, they're like, here's this character. Like, okay, we're going to spend, nope, we're not going to spend time with him. Here's this character. He's dead. We're not going to spend time with him. And it's like, why are you showing me all these people? And then none of them are in the tournament together. Even when Fujimaki comes to the second tournament, technically he's not in the tournament. He's not signed up for the tournament. So it's like they give us these characters and you're thinking they're going to fight. And it, they, they don't. They fight other people sometimes off screen. Like this one particular guy, Fujimaki fights. It gets broken up by the police and they're like, yeah, we're going to fight again. And I'm like, cool. That was a, that was going to be a good fight. He fights in some other tournament we don't see. And we just see him with bandages on his face or whatever. Technically, he won the tournament. But we don't see him again fight. And it's like, why? So, in terms of quality, the fighting is not that great. They don't really do crazy abilities. It's not like Baki or anything. Everybody does seem to be like this. Like, it, all the characters seem to be like this. Like, even in Baki, like, you had some smaller stature characters. Even though they're, like, real muscly. But... I don't know. Everybody just kind of looks the same in this. So I didn't really appreciate that. Um, the characters are not interesting because we don't spend any real time with them. We don't learn anything about them. So in terms of like the, the fighting with the other anime stuff that I'll be watching on Netflix, Baki is at the top and then like Kagan Ashore is really good. This one is lower than both of those unless they come out with something else to highlight these fighters that they're giving us and just go into detail with their abilities because they keep mentioning mentioning all these martial arts styles but we're not really spending any time like even in Baki we get breakdowns of boxing and kickboxing so, like we got so many breakdowns in that show and this it was just like we going this way this way this way just to get to the finish line for these two fights uh, but should you watch it if you like fighting anime sure because there are a few fights in here but it's nothing you could, you should rush out to see. But those are just my thoughts on this particular show. If you watched it, let me know what you thought about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.